Thank you for tuning in to the Radio Horror Show here on this recorded interview being broadcast uh, in the near future and live to do no phone calls. Tonight on the show with us, we have uh, both members of the band, Abby, Death, uh, Valerie, and Philip on the show with us. Thank you for coming on the show with us. Thank you. Hey, hey. Abby's Death is a goth rock industrial band, and they have some unusually crazy awesome music that uh was sent over to me by their pr guy and thank you both for coming on to talk a little bit about your career your band your music and what you got going on i yeah, appreciate it excited to be here the song in particular that he sent over was death is for the living between robert adam robert paul um that was the one that got me hooked into wanting to have you on the show. That was just recently released too, correct? This past like a week ago or two. Oh yeah, exactly. Where did yeah, you? Yeah, really excited about it. Where did you both come up with the name? Uh, where did you come up with the band for uh, Abby Death? Besides, obviously, based on your own, um, you know, last name. <laughs> well, it's good you pointed that out too. Um, we we wanted to play music together so we did it under our own names for like a year and kind of decided uh we were playing each other's solo material because she had her solo music and i had my solo music so we kind of combined it into a live set and obviously it was working uh, and then we decided to kind of like reintroduce ourselves under uh one band name and obviously it is because uh the name is our name and uh it just kind of fell into place and and made sense uh and uh, you know clearly our live shows were working and we we're starting to write some uh, pretty cool songs together so it just made sense basically abby death came from um philip's stage persona abby next which basically means abby death so we figured oh well every death works yeah what year did you guys get started Oh, geez. Our first show was 2013, but it was before we were called Abby Death. It was when we were called Valerie Gentile and Abby Next, which was both solo projects. And we, our first show was in 2013 Halloween, Philadelphia's Dracula's Ball. Wow. It was a sold out show. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. We were opening for uh, Combi Christ when he was doing his old school tour, where it was just like him and a keyboard player. And it was amazing. It was all, and then we just kept doing it from there. You guys are on your third album, correct? Uh, well, we released two EPs, contributed to a bunch of compilations with original music, um, and uh, have done some remixes and released singles. Um, we are still working our creative side and uh, hope to have an album done in the near future because clearly that is the next step for us. And, uh, you know, there'll be lots more to talk about when that happens. But we're, you know, we're busy right now and we're happy to, you know, release something that was fresh out of our new studio. And uh, plus, you know, with the collaborative uh, itch that we're scratching right now, um, having you know, done some remixes and plus uh, involving some songwriting with our friends. So uh, primarily speaking about Adam right now for this song. What do you both play for instruments? Well, we both play guitar. We both walk up to a keyboard uh, and we both sing. And it just depends on what song we're playing uh, to, you know, determine the flow of that. Uh, but, uh, you know, in other bands, uh, I played in, done drums and bass and kind of played whatever was necessary for the bands that I had been in at the time. Like, you know, I felt like something was missing, but in our, in our case, uh, that's our setup. So, you know, in the past I used to, we used to bring a bass and play things like that, but lately it's just been a lot of guitars. <laughs> Go into a little bit of detail about the uh, lyrics for uh, death is for the living and uh, how you came up with them. Any kind of backstory you can give us on uh, what makes this uh, particular song uh, seem to really stand out compared to the others oh well 
I guess uh, I wrote the song in 2020, like fall, November of 2020. And it was around like hearing a lot of news. Like, you know, I thought death was in the news a lot more than often due to the pandemic. And uh, I don't know, I just thought they talked about death every day. And, and it was just really frustrating how like they used death as like a fear tactic or they use death to like just tug at your emotions. And I was just trying to bring, like, uh, write this song that death is for the living. Like, they're talking about it, but they're not talking to dead people. They're talking to um, people that are alive. And I had a, I was talking to a friend about this. And then I was like, just like, why are the news keep talking about death? And he said, well, death is for the living. And I'm like, it is. And that's how the lyrics started coming about. Um, and we teamed up with Adam Robert Paul of the ritual industrial band the destruct principle to write the chorus because uh philip and i both worked on the lyrics for the verses and we kind of got stumped in the chorus because we almost felt like we said everything we had to say and working with adam in the past we already were into his his material and it's like this kid knows how to sing about death and be spooky and we really liked what he came about so the lyrics the credit of the lyrics in the chorus would go to adam and then you know we really appreciate you know it was a very collective piece between both bands and uh that's where death is for the living came about what made you both want to become like musicians what were you doing you know years ago in your childhoods that were just like i'm gonna rock it out all night long <laughs> <laughs> Or all night long and only night and then go to sleep during the day. And then this is what I'll become, goth rock industrial band. I think that being so young, because uh, I was born in 81, so I felt like I was really alive during a prime era of now it's old school, like aggression, sounds, industrial, like all the great bands were out. And I was certainly like immersed in, I felt like the, the I don't feel like the world is like this today. Maybe it's like in LA or a couple other places out here and there. But I used to feel like everything was rock and roll. You'd always see people wearing leather and big hair and dressed up in band t-shirts. And I feel like, you know, now when you see that, you're like, oh, I spotted people that look like that. And, <laughs> you know? um, so I was just really always into the interesting sounds, um, you know, early nails, um, always lis listened to a bunch of the old school metal and things like that so always uh i had an older brother too so he kind of always trickled things down there was always like instruments um literally just all kind of comes from that I, I think and i hate to sound this way too but knowing that i've played music you always wanted to show people your version of what you could do and i i think that at the time it felt cocky like oh i could do that better and so you would just go on stage and, and show them how it was done. You know, you weren't all talk. You were like, now I'm going to rock out harder, you know, harder than probably the, my favorite bands even did or something like that. And I really just think it comes from that fire in your belly and then being influenced by kind of an air of great music. Um, and that kind of just bled into just wanting to write interesting things and kind of just put that flavor of just putting something interesting. I don't, I don't, I personally don't think I write typical songs, typical song structures or a typical uh, vibe per se. Um, I'm always looking for, like, trust me, I want it to be a little more structured at times, but uh, you know, I tend to go off the wall and I really like Abby Death because it kind of hones me in a little bit. It keeps me from going too off the wall because I do want it to be, a bit more uh, appropriately structured. I'm not not saying we keep anything in the box, uh, but that's me personally uh, for, you know, what what I vibe on. I'll let Valerie talk about what she was into. Oh, I, you know, I I'll have to agree. It was just maybe time, place, and setting. You know, it was just the coolest thing to do, and it's like that's what I want to do. And I, I just, as soon as I could play guitar, picked up one in high school. I always sang, you know, that was a thing, man, Gemini holograms, the whole point about the movie Elvira is that she wants to show in Vegas, 
you know, it was just like, yeah, that, that seems like something I could do. And I, I just enjoyed it ever since and happy to, that Abby death is a thing, you know, we're married. So it's kind of like, this is our, this is our baby. And it, it's fun. It, it's kind of nice to you know that, you know, we have, we have Abby death, you know, cause we really, really enjoy it. And I think, you know, just, just the fact we're playing for people is really nice. And the fact that they're even interested, like, thank you so much for even, thinking our music is worth listening to and wanting to know more like that's awesome you know and then this is a horror podcast like it's just people love this stuff this stuff will never not be cool i think um val you had a uh and i stumbled upon this and uh when i was looking up the band uh back when william first sent me the email you had a kickstarter about eight years ago for your uh, solo ep i did i did that's how i funded it because I wanted it to be like I wanted to raise money for it because I wanted it mixed professionally. I wanted it mastered professionally. I didn't want it to sound like uh, garage band music, which it hundred percent was. Um, so the Kickstarter helped me create a physical CD for it and get it get it the audio treatment it deserves. It was uh, pretty successful, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was very successful. You know, I think I made over 100% of my goal. Uh, that money helped make uh, a couple of music videos for it. It definitely helped with packaging and shipping and really helped kickstart even Abby Death because I wanted to play um, the Love is Luxury Valerie Gentile EP live, but it, it was just me. And um, it was uh, already, you know, uh, Philip already helped on the EP and he already had his own solo material. So we just got the idea to play both solo materials live. And um, that's how Every Death came to be because it was hard to market two solo projects playing at one time, mm -hmm. uh, especially because of the diverse music. And then, like, I think it was Comic Christ manager at the time, Jason Fiber, uh, was like, hey, why don't you just? form a band and write music it would be more coherent and, and you know we actually ended up liking that better as well the uh i was trying to look up some of the older bands on there unfortunately the links uh i remember weren't going to uh click on them is it unusual to have like you okay so here it is uh the correct shadows black tape for a blue girl angel spit and now abby's death um, in like a, a 10 year period, let's just say, or 10 or, you know, however long you've been doing this, is it unusual to have, to be in, to, to have that many bands? Do bands really kind of like, you know, fall and rise and change and, and completely stop that often? I think, because, I think ever since goth bands can be done on a computer, I noticed that since the start of that, I noticed band lineups were changing. You know, especially if it's just one person who needed people to play it live, like now they can just bring a laptop. But Black Tape, you know, they, they always were changing. It's Sam Rosenthal, you know, as the director. And then he hires his, you know, you know, he searches bands and like, you know, he has like different versions for Black Tape as the albums progress. So that was just kind of, you know, and I'm still very close with Sam Rosenthal, you know, he, he signed this song, Death is for the Living, like his on project records, you know, he, I'm glad he believed in it and believed in us. So we still have a working relationship. Um, and he also, you know, published and licensed all the other Abby Death material and the Val Love is Luxury material. Um, and as for Angel Spit, you know, I think he was just looking for a band, uh, Carl, he was just looking for a band uh, and he's always changing. That's another band that's also always changing. And the Crew Shadows, I think, yeah, they were just, I kind of entered it at times as they decided, let's just have musicians. And, and I think it's not necessarily a band if they're like hiring you and you don't necessarily contribute to writing, but they need the live presence. So maybe, maybe it's common, but I, I don't, I don't know, you know, but it's, it's interesting to have a career in playing guitars for this genre of music so I'm, I'm proud of it is this also you online in the um uh what looks like l from uh death note uh tank top black purple 
And then uh, black uh, sewn up looking gloves around your wrists. Are you also a model too? Oh yeah, but I, oh man, I, I, I am a model, but I haven't done it in like maybe three to five years. You know, I, I, I went that route, like, you know, I did some modeling for Manic Panic and Vampire Freaks and Candyless Photography and uh, the A is for Arsenic stuff. You Man, know, I, I, I did Vampire it, Freaks, just, the, uh, the, the, the social media website? Yeah, the social media website. Like, I think that picture you're speaking of was for, may have been for a Vampire Freaks promo of some sort. The uh, I I haven't uh, I haven't heard about that website in years. I heard they they've completely shut it down. Oh well, now he puts on you know now Jet from Vampire Freaks is putting on Dark Side of the Con, and it is the hugest goth event in in uh, the United States right now. Um, oh really? Because you know, yeah. Oh, um, we're playing. We we've, we've had the 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 honor to play Dark Side of the Con two and three, and in twenty twenty two April. Is Dark Side of the Con four? It's in uh, it's in New Jersey, and it's at like a castle. It's in a Sheraton, but it's in shape like a castle. And it's Jews. I've seen people, we've seen people at these conventions that we started. We used to see when we started gothing in like the early two thousands, and they all come out for this. So I, he doesn't have the social media aspect, but he still has the the shop. He still promotes shows in New York City and in New Jersey. And he has this huge convention. It's, you know, it's three days. I think, you know, Birthday Massacre, Orgy, The Crew Shadows. Oh, I can't even think of all of them. But Eagle Likeness. He's got, um, yeah, it's, it's huge. So he's, he's upgraded. Or the whole Vampire Freaks empire is, you know, switch gears. Yeah, we have one of those uh, Castle Sheraton Hotel things here in Framingham, Massachusetts as well. <laughs> oh, cool! I I I never even knew these existed. Uh, yeah, they kind of exist uh, all over the place. Uh, there, I thought it was just maybe here in Framingham, but no. Apparently, a lot of the Sheraton hotels are done up to look like this, uh, you know, castle style that they do. Well, people seem to like it. <laughs> yeah, I they're approve. incredibly popular. It's always good for the imagination, <laughs> right? Yeah, and I was not familiar with this uh, gothic event. What what state does it take place in? Do you, do you remember what town? I think it's in Parsippany, New Jersey. That sounds the right. The Parsippany Sheraton. I will have to look into more about that because it sounds like something right up my alley. When does it usually take place? Uh, well, the next one uh, in particular is April. Yeah, just look up Dark Side of the Con. You should... You know, the, the show flyer is already out for all the acts and uh, things. I mean, plus they have panels and other things. They have live bats. They're, you know, it's not just... Oh, yeah, they bring bat. They have, like, a whole room dedicated to just live bats. <laughs> you know, and clearly it's in the the hotel environment, so it's it's lots of vendors... You know, three dance floors. Like they take, there's like I think a couple of ballrooms, and then the dance floors. There's two. There's going to be two stages. This is the first. 2022 will be the first um, year the convention had two stages. Oh yes, very true. Um, and it's going to be like one for bands, one stage for bands, and another stage for like acts that don't need, you know, as much space as a ten-person band. <laughs> Basically, a room for bands with, with drummers, and then a room with bands that probably don't need live drummers. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people go to find more information about Abby's death and uh, get uh, access to your music? What's your, uh, you have a YouTube channel as well, correct? Yeah, we do have a YouTube channel. Absolutely, you can find updated content on that. Um, our band camp is uh, something that we definitely maintain. And uh, with the new edition of Project Records, uh, clearly you can now connect with us through that. And we have our personal and band Instagram pages, uh, Abby Death Band, Valerie Abby, got Abby Next. Um, so pretty much all the usual things, you know, we're all over Spotify and all the usual outlets. Um, is, and, the, uh, uh, is the band's music also out on uh, vinyl? 
we do never made any vinyl, but I am definitely open to that happening, especially when we uh, finalize an album. We are on a um, a, com a vinyl that's a compilation of this venue in Portland, Oregon called the Lovecraft Bar, but awesome. it's like super rare. Like we keep, we got like 50 copies of this and we sold them like crazy. When we brought them on tour, I was like, oh, we won't put them in line. We'll just have them to sell. If you come see us in person, it'd be like a nice item at our merch table you wouldn't see anywhere. And we just didn't name your price because we had no idea what to sell it for, but we have the outside uh, off the realignment EP on there. And I'm told it sounds really great. I, we haven't heard it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like a dual like vinyl that's red and black and the cover is awesome. Also featured on that um, Lovecraft uh, 2018 vinyl is uh, uh, Amelia Arsenic and, um, oh my gosh, Ships in the Night. Um, you know, a, a act from Virginia that I really like. Um, but it's great, you know, if you find it, there's like, I think there's 500 copies roaming around, but that's the only time we've been on Vital. Awesome. Well, thank you both for coming on the show to talk a little bit about Abby's death, and I do appreciate it. And we will be playing your music alongside uh, this interview when it airs. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Uh...